that you had mentioned a lot in terms of your uh, digital background, especially that uh, you're, you're a new media expert in where you are teaching. Uh, would you explain a little bit in terms of experience in Adobe Suite? Even though uh, we do use other software like uh, Maya and 3D Studio Max, mm -hmm. but um, the main core of the curriculum, we use a lot of Adobe Suite, and I just um, want to know your mm -hmm. experience. I, I I have been pretty much experimenting a lot with a way to approach the use of Adobe Suite in the classroom. Um, for instance, last semester I did a lot of instruction itself of Adobe, meaning you know going through the tools and and making sure that they learn the basic skill sets to do manipulation and digital painting using Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator. Um, in the past, I have tried using uh, resources such as lynda.com for instruction. Uh, it has worked well to a certain extent, but not really, you know, not 100% because uh, students are reluctant to go through the whole course on their own. But uh, the way I have approached that in the past is like assigning lynda.com I mean, courses as textbooks. So asking them to cover the course and, you know, uh, and, you know pretty much administering and and uh, making sure that they go through the whole content, but it has not it has proven not to be so effective, so I think a combination is the best and um, and now my experience itself with photoshop is uh, i you know I try to keep my courses away from the instruction technology itself, so we do a lot of we certainly cover the you know the the contents in terms of in technology itself, but but the focus of my courses are always uh, critical thinking more than anything else. But by the end of the course, they do have enough skills to walk away with with you know sufficient knowledge of uh, in order to create digital painting, which is pretty much outstanding. Good. That's all. Thank you. Okay, I have the next question. Um, and as you as you saw by the description of this uh, job, um, it covers a lot of range of different courses. Um, and so I'm just uh, I, my question has to do with the intro to art, which is a an art appreciation mm -hmm. course. It's a, a a larger lecture hall type class for uh, general education studies. Um, could you tell me how, how you would approach that or experience you've had teaching that or interest in uh, um, teaching that course? I believe it's either once a year or maybe twice a year, and mm -hmm. I don't know that exact schedule. And Plumber, our chair, would, would have that detail. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, maybe comment on that particular course, how you would want to approach that. I mean, in terms of experience of teaching large audiences, I don't have that as a professor. I did uh, when I was doing my master's. I was the GTA, the graduate assistant for um, a history of design course, which was a 300 people, um, you know, 300 people course session. So, so I know how that works, but I haven't had a chance to teach it myself. Now I am quite interested in that. To be um, honest, you know, uh, to a certain extent, last year I this I, I well, I've been thinking about moving into media studies, uh, for more for the critical aspect for teaching the critical theoretical component of of it. But uh, I have seen myself in a situation where I always have to teach uh, studio courses more than anything. So um, the way I would approach that is. Um, well, I would say I need to have I would need to have a foundation in terms of a background in terms of what has it been done in the past, because uh, because what I usually what usually happens in my cases is that I take the lead too fast to a certain extent, and, and my approach to you know what I want them to know about art is pretty much contemporary art, say from minimalism up to contemporary and what today. Uh, what's going on today in art? Um, so I will have to to make sure that I am covering all the aspects that need to be covered in, in your curriculum. Yeah. Well. Yeah. In that. In that. Well.
well, in all of our classes, uh, of course, there is a uh, uh, curriculum proposal that, that gives the structure and the content and lays that out. And then, of course, um, it's up to each faculty member, obviously, to design their, their syllabus. Uh, but uh, there, there are a number of um, texts that are kind of the achronological survey of our mm -hmm. uh, art uh, class, uh, excuse me, um, textbooks. So something like that would probably be a resource that uh, you'd probably be working with. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Living with Art. Um, there's a few others that um, you're not know, calling right now. But, um, yeah, that. But uh, you're familiar with the way that kind of a class is structured, uh, like intro to art or to appreciate as an appreciation. Sure, class. sure. I mean, in that sense, yes. I mean, I know I know how to approach it, but I haven't had a chance to do it on my own. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, uh, in your in your um, uh, in your preparation uh, in the area of uh, history and art history, uh, what art history classes um, uh, have you taken? I thought the history of design would be especially uh, valuable here, but also just uh, in overall in his art history. What, what well, uh, well, uh, uh, well, obviously I have taken the, the you know the. the core courses for art history while I was going through uh, education. But uh, when I was working for Uni Universidad San Francisco in Quito, I taught historiographic design for two years or so. Uh, that was one of the main classes I was teaching. So I am familiar with that, um, with that area. Uh, now as a student, one of the most, I would say one of the best experiences that I had through going through the PhD was a course um, that I took about minimalism with Robert Hobbes, who is a you know top leading professor of history in, in Virginia Commonwealth, uh, and that was that was the sweetest thing ever. You know, it was a three-hour engagement with this crazy guy who could have uh, philosophers talk about contemporary art in such a way. You know, so that's that's something I learned from him in that in, in the sense of trying to intertwine. Art history or design history with with uh, contemporary philosophy. So, so the the, the 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 classes themselves don't become rough and you know data, but more of a storytelling um, technique, really. Well, how would you feel? Uh, how would you feel about having to teach a large mega section mm -hmm. production production course about for non art how would I feel about it? Yeah. Uh, well, in the last four years, I was co-teaching um, our capstone course of senior studies, which was about 50 people, and we would split the class in three in three, you know, groups of uh, you know about 15 or so people. But eventually, we will have to go through everybody, and I really enjoy that. And actually, I regret that it, and, and I was that was one of my critical. Um, commentaries on the on this system is that we didn't have a chance to go through everyone. So by the time I had a chance to talk to say group number three, it was already too late because they were committed to the seminar to the uh, I mean to the exhibition itself and they weren't reluctant to you know incorporate any feedback <laughs> at that time. But um, I think it works nicely uh, as long as the system is set up in such a way that you have a chance to meet everybody. Yeah. Okay, now uh, another question from me. Uh, can you uh, describe uh, about your teaching philosophy, mm -hmm. uh, including what well, you already talked a little about this, uh, uh, including uh, how you would uh, address the, uh, the contemporary art issues, mm -hmm. so philosophy with uh, you know, contemporary issues? I would say, you know, in on pure honesty, and it may be in detriment to myself, <laughs> that um, that I do believe in progressive education. So my kids, my my child, my children. I have two: uh, a 13-year-old boy and an 11-year-old girl. They had been uh, in Montessori education and and uh, and um, free democratic schooling and what have you. So the way the, the reason why I'm 
mention in them is that I decided to move towards that sort of education very early in my teaching career. But that has also brought me the most problems with the system itself. Because in my teaching, you know, I do have the same approach of a Montessori teacher in the sense that I do uh, provide a lot of power to students. Uh, I am more in terms of a guide to them that I am an instructor of a professor you're imparting knowledge. So uh, it has brought me problems, I mean, in the sense that uh, in, a, in a college such as St. Olaf, which is really structured and, you know, very traditional, the students expect to receive everything, you know, fed up and, and structure and line and after line and this is what you have to do and this is what you have to complete and so when I when I approach an, a problem saying you know I don't grade for instance well, of course I do grade but I don't put that pressure on them and I say you know especially in the foundation courses in foundation I don't think they need to have that on top of them so I ask them to try to feel free but it takes me about half semester for them to trust me in the sense that it is not after a grade there, but they are after knowledge. So that's the way I try to approach it every time. You know, I try I'm not into putting a lot of information into their heads, more than pushing them kindly, so to speak, for them to discover what they can or cannot do. Uh, in my foundation courses, I usually begin my classes by making one committed goal uh, quote unquote, which is I will promise or I, I will try by all my means to have you learn nothing over this semester. And the way I, the reason why I ask them to do that is or to get that inf that piece of, of uh, information in their heads is because I hate when students walk from their classes and they make the comment of, you know, we didn't learn a thing from this class. And that frustrates me as an educator badly. So I tell them, you know, at least you have learned that this class is worthless. You know, that's all. <laughs> so, so that's my sort of promise at the beginning. And when, I, when they write reviews by the end of the term, they usually say, you have failed. We have learned, you know, many things in this course. Um, so I try to challenge them in that sense, you know. I, I, want, them, I want to gain their trust in terms of, of learning so they can experiment, especially foundation level courses, because they are so used to getting instructions in other, you know, in other classes, uh, non-art classes, that they don't trust you as a professor. They think you're, you know, have to, to get them. Yeah, one one of the things I, I really love about the Montessori method is that um, getting students to that teachable moment, and that's where they ask the question mm -hmm. instead of being told this is the topic. And this is what you need to know now. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I can I can understand how you're you're integrating that and the, the friction that that you come up against in a traditional structure, but uh, but one that uh, puts the responsibility on the student. It does. It does. And you know, uh, of course, you don't got you don't have hundred percent satisfaction by the end of the term. There are some people who are just used to to the system, and they will you know. Uh, just don't digest it. But others, when they get it very soon, they really, really enjoy the, the, the structure or the non-structure, so to speak, you know, however you want to see it. But <laughs> Yeah, yeah there, there's that percentage that uh, almost come in with, make me learn what I don't really care if I learn. Yes, yes. And, and those lumps are difficult. Yeah. Uh, so it, this is a structure that really is good for mm -hmm. them. And, 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 and it is more difficult in terms of, of uh, technology instruction because I would say, you know, 80% of my students every semester, they sit down and they expect to learn how to use a mouse and a computer. And that's what they have in their heads. And, you know, and so when, when they don't use in my courses a computer for the first three weeks, they panic. You know, they say, well, when are we going to use the computer? I mean, we're supposed to. Yes, you are, but, you know, you need to speed up your head first and then use the medium. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, uh, the next question is, um, how do you approach teaching a class for the first time? One you have never 